Hey everyone, my name is Ben Heisch, and today we are going to be checking out some of my favorite camera accessories. I know there are a ton of actual cameras on this table right now, um, which makes it a little bit more confusing, but there's just a lot of little things here and there that can make your life a little bit easier, make your shoots more enjoyable, and uh, you know, just some things that help with the workflow and all the different things. So as someone who uh, obviously kind of cares about this kind of stuff, I thought I'd share them with you. Now the first thing that I will definitely say in all of this is there's gonna be a ton of stuff in here and this is not like a, hey, you need to go buy all this crap video. It's more of just like, hey, maybe there's a thing here or there that you may not have thought about that might be helpful for your particular way of photographing things. Whatever the case may be, hopefully this is helpful but definitely don't think you need to go and buy a bunch of stuff for no good reason. And again, while I'm not expecting you to buy any of these things, if you do want to check any of this stuff out, obviously links will be below. And if you just didn't know for some reason, they're affiliate links, which means that if you click on them, you know, I get basically credit for sending you to wherever the heck you are gonna buy the stuff if you end up buying something. So the reason why myself and a lot of people add those links is both for convenience, because I personally like when other people do that, but also in you, you know, clicking those links, it helps support the channel by sending me a dollar or two or depending on what you buy. And even if you don't purchase something on here, one of the things you can do if you really feel so led uh, is something I often do is if I'm gonna buy something, especially like a lens or something, I'll go to someone's page and click on a button for that lens so that they can get some credit because, you know, always nice to support your fellow creator friends. So the first thing that I'll start with is the thing that kind of, uh, I guess, revolutionized some of the way that I go about using all of these different cameras. And that is specifically these straps from my friend Todd at Clever Supply Co. You have all, I'm sure if you follow this channel, seen me talk about them quite a bit. They use the Peak Design hardware right here, which makes that absolutely fantastic because then you can buy one strap and use it on multiple cameras and it is just such a quick on and off. I have basically just been able to, you know, use these on so many different cameras. This is my favorite strap. I've used this one and then another one quite a bit. Um, they're the adjustable ones so you can, you know, tighten it up when you need to and loosen it down. While we're on that subject, for the times that I want to use just like a point and shoot or something, um, I have this just wrist strap. Uh, I use it with the X100 cameras quite a bit. They do make a skinny version, which I'm probably going to want to get uh, because it, it's a little bit bulky. And I wish I actually had my keys on me, but I actually added one of the little peak design things to my keychain. And every once in a while, if I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna lose my keys and everything, I've often just used this kind of as an extra little bit to add to my keychain. So that is definitely a bonus there. And then the third thing that has to do with that in particular is Peak Design now sells these in black. Normally, Peak Design sells them with these right here, but you can order custom black ones. Big fan of all of that stuff and um, have obviously <laughs> purchased multiple other versions so I can get my cameras to be a little bit more minimal. So since we uh, started, I guess, in the middle here, I will keep going. I recently was sent a few different grips for my Leica cameras. One is from a guy that I'm not sure if he even has a website necessarily. I know that he sells them through um, the Leica Classifieds forum on Facebook, but they are made for the M10s and uh, I believe others as well. I think he made some for the M11. When you're using a slightly larger lens, it just gives you a little bit extra flexibility. And the thing that's really annoying about Leicas in general is that you often have to remove the whole base plate to get to the battery, but you are able to just pop this on and off, kind of like what the M11 did. Um, and one of the things that I like about this one is it's modular, so you can take this part off, which adds the Arca Swiss plate thing right here if you want. And then the bonus part here is that if you flip this up, it is the exact space for a SD card. So while I wouldn't 
put a used SD card that I've shot for a gig or something like that in here. It's never come undone. I've never had an issue with it and I've used it quite a bit now. I would use this as a memory card storage as like a just in case. So I'm just using these and leaving a 64 gigabyte card in here at all times. And that way, if I show up to a shoot or something like that, which has never happened in a long time, but if it did, you know, I'll have a card in there ready to go. And then I also received these from Camera Craft. And I'll try to put a link to this other M10 one as well. They do a similar thing for sure. You have the Arca Swiss thing here, a big plate, and you're able to just pop this in and out. And it just looks really, really beautiful. It kind of works with the whole aesthetic of the camera. I normally wouldn't want to do something like this because it kind of ruins the low profile nature of this in a bit. But especially when using larger lenses and at weddings and stuff, I find that having the grip is really helpful and has helped me to not have a sore of fingers at the end of the day from grabbing on so tightly. And this is the one for the M6 and all of the other film cameras. Um, I really like this one as well. It just does a really good job. And again, I don't have a tool here, but you can take this off and you also can add a hand strap if you wanted to. The nice thing is this whole thing comes off and the original base plate stays there. You also are able to put the batteries that the M6 takes. There's multiple spots in here where you can put extra batteries, which is again, always helpful. Continuing on with that as well. Um, I don't know if they still have some, but Clever Supply Co had one of these that were done with, I believe, Artisan Obscura, which make really, really good buttons here. So I've used those on my M6. And then this is the TT Artisan light meter. The M6 obviously already has a meter, um, but I've used it for other cameras and stuff as well. It's pretty affordable and obviously very straightforward. You can see just you set your settings and it tells you whether it is under or overexposed. I also have used these um, cases from Ret Reto or something like that. This one in particular is great because it fits 120 film and 35 millimeter film, depending on how you set it up. And then while we're on cameras, I might as well just talk about the simple things here. So this is the Fujifilm X-E4. And these are the basic accessories that are you know from Fujifilm, but I do find them really helpful. Personally, I leave the grip on at all times. If I didn't use the grip, I would definitely be using this thumb grip. So either way, both of those accessories are just like the base ones from Fujifilm, but they are really, really helpful and convenient. So 10 points to Gryffindor. Now, one of the very random things that I have on this table uh, are these little dots here. And if you've noticed, I've taken off the blank tape that was on my M10s and I've just added these simple dots. I uh, bought these things on Amazon. They're not great as I can see that they're kind of starting to fade off. The black one actually works a little bit better, but it fits the camera a lot more than just having a blank piece of tape. Uh, I personally like the minimalist look of not having a red dot in the middle. If I was able to easily get a black dot like this one on my M6, I would do it. But buying a uh, $5 roll of tape is a lot cheaper than buying an M10P. All right, and then a random thing, but um, something that has been really helpful, I've just always had batteries just kind of floating around my bags and I've used them for sure. But one of the things that I got when I got the um, Peter McKinnon Nomadic backpack that I use is this battery case. And there's magnets in here that kind of pop in like that. It fits Canon batteries, Sony batteries. It fits the Leica batteries really well. It's just a really, really good setup. Um, and they give you these little stickers to sort of indicate that. Obviously, you can see it on the contacts right there. But at a quick glance, it's nice to just see it. It's a good system, and I really like this little case. So yeah, I really dig it. I know I mentioned light meters a little bit ago, but this is my actual, like, Siconic. I got this as a kind of like a gift, I guess. Uh, my friend Josh from Indie Film Lab gave it to me. The spot meter on it was broken, and I have used it for years without that, but then over the winter decided, like, I really want the spot meter to work. So I sent it out to Siconic, and they actually fixed it for me, which was awesome. Uh, it was just a couple hundred bucks, so these can definitely be super expensive, 
it, but you can find different ones uh, online. So I'll put a link to, you know, Psychonic meters in general on KEH and you can see if there are any available. Now this is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. It has gotten a lot of hype because it is A, really good, but B, really expensive, and especially this uh, carbon fiber version. That being said, I hate tripods and I don't hate this tripod. I always was annoyed by taking tripods everywhere, but this one is very small, compact, lightweight, and I do think that the carbon fiber version is worth spending the extra money. I've been considering making a review on it, uh, but it just feels weird to do a tripod review. So let me know if you are interested in that. Another thing to go along with the batteries is I have these Nightcore chargers for pretty much all of my batteries. They are just USB, so they're all a little bit different, but this one has a USB just built into the charger itself. And these are the ones for the X100 and the X100 series and the XE4s. I also do the same thing with Leica and the GFX and all sorts of stuff. They're all a little bit different, again, in their configurations. Um, and this is the M10 charger, which is significantly cheaper than buying another charger from Leica. So been using them for a long time, zero issues, big fan. Here's something I recently started putting in my bag. It's from Loom Cube, and it's just like a small little bicolor light. It doesn't have a crazy amount of output or anything, but having it just like in a bag and ready to go is always super helpful. And honestly, if it's really, really dark out, this is bright enough to power for like a portrait or something if need be. And there's plenty of other ones out there. Loom Cube sent me this. And the reason I do like it though is because it's bicolor. It puts out a decent amount of light. It does have the diffusion here and it just charges by USB-C. So anytime USB-C is involved instead of some other USB thing, I'm just, I'm just much more of a fan of that. Now, very underrated piece of kit here. If you do video at all and you use Canon cameras and have EF lenses, this is the variable ND filter adapter and it's Absolutely fantastic. It's one of the reasons why I stuck with Canon for so long. The ND filter is just in here and it's so easy. It's basically like having internal NDs. I'm probably gonna sell my R6 and buy an FX3. And this is probably going to be the thing I'm gonna miss the most about the Canon system overall. They're not cheap, but the convenience of just having this on a camera and not having to switch ND filters and stuff all the time is really, really nice. And I'm gonna miss this thing. Moving on, um, obviously I have a lot of different lens hoods over here. And the first of which is the ones from Haug, I believe, uh, whatever we wanna call them. I mean, they make them for all sorts of different cameras and stuff. And then uh, I'm a big fan of the Moment Cinebloom filters and especially on the X100 cameras. And I do have some square hoods here, but unfortunately the Moment Cinebloom specifically doesn't fit inside of the square hood version. And so the only way I'm able to use the Cinebloom's is with this one, unless I just don't use a hood at all. I ended up buying the original square hood. Um, you've seen it in a lot of my X100 videos for sure, but I really wanted to start using the Cinebloom. So I bought this one as well. And then they recently sent over a couple things. This one in particular, this hood you've seen in my X100F video. It's definitely more along the lines of like the new Summicrons and the Summilux lenses. I do really like that it has the cutout here because when you use it with the, and you know, optical viewfinder, optical viewfinder, the cutout does actually help a lot. They also sent over these tiny little buttons the larger buttons I've found just get a little too wobbly and stuff. Obviously it's also easier to just say like, hey, hit the red button in case, you know, somebody else uses the camera. And then um, I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this or not, but Square Hood sent over this other one. It doesn't have the cutout, but it's shaped a lot like the old uh, Summicron that I used to have. So kind of reminiscent. I'm kind of bummed that I let that lens go. So um, yeah, I put it on my X100V and I'm uh, stoked on that. Speaking of the X100s, I have a 
video coming out soon about the WCL X100. It's been really cool. I'm a big fan of the 28 millimeter focal length. Technically this is a lens, but it's also kind of an accessory and something that I don't see enough people talking about. If you like 28 millimeters, it works really well and I really have enjoyed using it. Very, very simple thing here, but especially if you use Leica cameras, even things like lens caps and things like this are just so expensive. So what I started doing was not using the Leica caps and just buying cheap, you know, three, four, five dollar ones on Amazon. So these are just basic caps. I mean, this is the one that I put on my 50 Sumalux. It's definitely better to have something like this um, then lose a ridiculously expensive cap from a Leica camera. Then the GoPro, I did a whole video on this in particular, but the Hero 9 is what I have with the max lens mod, which makes it so I can turn it up and down in any direction and the footage will stay horizontal. I did a whole video about how I stick it on the top of a camera, but I've also used this quite a bit, which I double kind of like as a bow tie when I'm using like a button up shirt which like almost every video I'm wearing a button up shirt except for this one, but you know, obviously this is stupid and a <laughs> sweatshirt, but you get the idea. Um, you can just mount it right here. These are all of my memory card cases. I've used this Pelican one for forever. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but it's like the hard case Pelican style. I've just been a big fan of that for a long, long time. But one of the things that I started to get into are using the Apple AirTags because I just like to know where my stuff is at. This is a collab thing that Clever Supply Co. did with somebody. It fits in the same slot that the other SDs do, so you can stick, you know, whatever you want in here, you know, business cards or whatever. And then I've just stuck an AirTag in there. In addition to the battery thing, I have this from the Peter McKinnon whole set here. Um, Obviously you can fit different kinds of cards, but I mostly just have SD cards Can fit a decent amount in here. And then there's a little zipper part where I have stuck another air tag. Kind of a cool setup, I enjoy it. And then I've started to use more filters since I've been doing more video stuff. And so just simple things like, you know, step up rings. What I've been doing is just buying the 82 millimeter filters when needed so that I can just, you know, buy one set of filters and then step up when needed. This is the Moment Variable ND filter. Been using these quite a bit at times for mainly filming stuff. And I like the cases that come with them because they're nice like little hard cases. And then just because they don't say it on the front, um, I just took a little painter pen thing and wrote what they are on the front because I have a lot of different filters. And then obviously I've talked about their filters before with the Cinebloom, the 5% is my favorite. I have it both in an 82 millimeter, which I actually have on my camera right now. And then also in a 49 millimeter, which is what I said I use on the X100V. They also came out with a set of flare filters, kind of an odd thing, but if you like that kind of anamorphic look where you get the streaky flares going across. They have them in both gold and blue. So if you want that like JJ Abrams style look, you know, you can get that with a simple little filter. Okay, just a couple more things and we will be uh, out of here. Again, uh, I've been doing more video stuff lately. So I've been using the Rode Wireless Go 2. And the nice thing is they just, when you turn them on, they start recording internally. I have been using them at weddings where I've been miking either the officiant or a groom or wherever I can stick this in a good place. I've even just stuck them on tables during speeches. If I don't get them and something fails for whatever reason, it's not the end of the world because I don't need it. But one of the reasons I really do like this is because I'm able to add a little bit of extra fun to the slideshows I make for my couples in photography. And last but definitely not least is this power bank from OmniCharge. I have a ton of power banks. I am sort of obsessed with them. I have an anchor one that goes on the back of my phone, which obviously I'm a big fan of. I use it all the time. This one has two USB with quick charging. It has a regular AC plug here. And then obviously it has a USB-C and then it also has a DC in and out. It also just has a really, really nice screen here. It tells you your battery percentage, again, how much is going in and out. And then what's brilliant is I always forget a lightning cable. I always have a USB-C cable 
I never bring a lightning cable. So it honestly uh, has been really, really useful because I can bring this and I can use it with these different, you know, little chargers to charge my camera when needed, but also I know that I can just toss my phone on top of this while it's charging other things even, and I can get some juice out of there without needing to scramble around and try to plug my phone in somewhere. Even when I go to a coffee shop or anything, I'm often able to just charge my computer or an iPad or whatever, and then I just set my phone on this and it charges because it has like the wireless charging which is fantastic. Anyway, I know this was probably a long video, but hope this was helpful. If you're interested in anything, obviously it's down below. So give this video a like if you've made it this far. Again, subscribe if you haven't already, and then I will see you all on the next one.